welcome to NDG, a non-denomination group. We invite you into our presence to study the Word of God. And we, <clears throat> before we get started tonight, I want to make you aware that NDG group will be having a virtual communion service on the 20, on Thanksgiving. We, it will start at 9 o'clock, and we will be done within a half an hour. We just want to give God thanks on that day. So any of you that desire to join us in communion and you do not have the emblems, the wafer, or the wine, <clears throat> we will make sure and we will be posting, and we have already posted how that you can get them, those that live in the metropolitan area. We will be having it at the Mid-Continent Library, and you can pick it up there on a certain date. Also in Leavenworth, Brother James Moss will, <clears throat> and his number is also listed, that you can call him and you can pick them up. And of course, they will be uh, at no cost to you. We just want everyone to be so thankful for this day. And we uh, want to just invite you to as many people across the world that can join us. Uh, please join us. We are reaching uh, West Africa. We are reaching Uganda. We are reaching South Sudan. We are reaching Kenya. So <clears throat> join us. Amen. And uh, tonight we uh, want to go to the Word of God because we <clears throat> have a lot to unfold. Remember, we are still dealing with the dispensational truth, and we are in the sixth dispensation. And this is our third teaching on dispensation. You might ask, say, why are you spending so much time on dispensation? Well, I think that dispensational truth is one of the foundations of our growth in God. Because if we do not understand that a dispensation is a period of time that God deals with mankind in a particular way, and there are seven dispensations. And we've tried to also cover the eight covenants that God have made, made with mankind so that you can understand that there is basically no difference between the covenants and the dispensations as well. But we, because we're living today in the time of grace, we want to make sure, and how much time it takes, I do not care, because I'm not trying to be politically correct. I'm not trying to be socially correct. I'm just trying to be biblically correct. And we do need to dig into the word that we might gain an understanding of the word. But it's so crucial to us in the time that we're living because we're living in grace now. This is the period of time that we're living. And a judgment is coming at the end of the grace period, which is known as the church age. And if you don't understand these kind of things, it certainly will hinder your walk with God. And I just want to encourage you that whatever time that we have to spend in it, we will spend in it until we have exhausted it. And uh, <clears throat> I do want to go before the Lord in prayer and invite his presence. And I beg you to pray along with us. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful and thankful for this great opportunity. We are thankful for being among the land of the living. We are thankful for having the use of our limbs and our faculties. We are thankful for all the good and gracious gifts that you have bestowed upon us. And Lord Jesus, as we come to your word tonight, open up our blinded eyes that we might see. Strengthen us, O oh God, in the areas of our weaknesses. And bring our families together, dear God. Join them in one mind and one accord so we can be a reflection of your glory in the things that we say and importantly in the things that we do. These things we do ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. <clears throat> 
our scripture for tonight as we begin to embark on this is found in the book of Hebrews. And <clears throat> again, like I said, I'm going to take my time. And it's found in Hebrews, the first chapter and the first verse. Now, the Bible says this, God, who at sundry times, that means various and, and, and sundry times. It's like going to a drugstore and you'll see they sell sundries at the, at the drugstore. Even though they sell drugs, they have a paper towel, they have gum, all those things. Those are called sundries. So God at sundry times and in divers, in different manners, different periods of time. That's why a dispensation of, of innocent, a dispensation of conscience spake in times past unto the fathers. Our father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by the prophets. Notice what it says, the next verse. Hath in these last days. Now, many of you know that we're living in the last days because this church age is going to end. This age of grace is going to end. Many people have started setting certain times for it when it's going to end. And I shared a little bit about it last uh, uh, video. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. He's speaking to us by his son. And I told you that for a better understanding so it doesn't complicate things is sometimes take the word son and just put flush. And it will make a very great understanding for you if you did such you would understand whom he hath appointed heir, hallelujah, of all things, by whom, hallelujah, also he made the worlds. Amen. Go to the next verse. Who being, listen carefully, who being the brightness of his glory, what? The glory of God, being the brightness of his glory in the, and I want you to see this word, express image, the express image of his person. That's why Jesus could so told his disciples, he said, when you see me, you have seen the father. Amen. Because he was the express image. Remember, I told you one of the most important scriptures in the Bible is John 4, 24, where it said, God is a spirit. So he is the express image of his person. So when you see Jesus, you are seeing God. As a man, he walked beside the Sea of Galilee. But as God, he walks up on the Sea of Galilee. As a man, he hungered and thirst. But as God, amen, he gave living waters. Amen. He gave living waters. He turned water, amen, into wine. Amen. He brought, amen, he, um, manna from heaven. Open up a bakery in heaven, amen, to feed his people. What a mighty God do we serve. Amen. So he was the express image of his person in upholding all things. And I want you to see this. I want you to pay attention to it by the what? Word of his power. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and what that word was God. Thank God for his word. When he had by himself purged our sins. By himself he purged our sin. Set down on the right hand of the majesty on high. That's a, that's a, a beautiful scripture. But I want to... Uh, take you and make you understand or see some things, we're going to look at some scriptures tonight. And I want you to see that God, that you just see that at sundry times and, and different ways manifested him, is speaking to us by his son. It's important that we understand that God robed himself in flesh and came and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. We saw what he could do. Amen. Well, I want you to know that he was the prophet in the Old Testament. He's our priest right now. 
and he's also our soon coming king. And that's why I want you to understand so that you can understand the period of time that we are in. So let's go to some scriptures tonight. I want you to go to the book of, of uh, Genesis and well, let's uh, Deuteronomy. Uh, the 18th chapter and the 15th verse. Now, I want you to know that Moses, God told Moses, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee. That's the word of God. That was prophesied in the Old Testament that, and say from the midst of thee of thy brethren. That's why he observed the Jewish law. That's why he was circumcised. That's why he was baptized. <laughs> he said, like unto me. Like unto who? Moses. He said, unto him shall you hearken. And the word hearken means to listen. See, we need to listen to what Jesus is saying. <clears throat> and I want you to go so that was one of the scriptures, but I want to uh, go to another scripture to show you, amen, that he is not only our prophet, but he's going to be our priest. He's in the priestly office right now. That's why the Bible says he's making intercession for us, because we don't know how to pray like we ought to pray. But he makes intercession for us. He's in the priestly office right now. And let's go to the ninth chapter and the 24th verse. It says, For Christ is not entered to the holy place made with hands. See, that temple and, and that tabernacle that was in the wilderness was made by hands. Listen what it says. Which are the figures. See, that was a figure, almost a shadow. And a shadow is not the object. It's just a reflection of the object. The figures of the truth. But into heaven itself, hallelujah, now to appear in the presence of God for who? For us. Amen. He, he, he appeared for us. He's making intercession, amen, for believers. That's why it's not about a denomination. It's not about religion. It's, it's about a relationship. And he's making, he's the priest. And I want to show you that he's coming as our king. I want to show you this. Go to Revelation, the 19th chapter. This is the end of the book. And it says, And he hath on his vesture, talking about Jesus, and on his thigh a name written, King of kings. So there is no king, but he is the king of all kings throughout this world. And he is the Lord of lords. Any lords out there? Well, I want you to know Jesus is the Lord of lords. He is the owner and the maker. And that's what lordship is. He, he, he's the owner. See, some people want, want him to save you, but you don't want him to be your lord. He's got to be your Lord, my brother, my sister, my friend. So I want to show you and go back to his first coming. See, because I told you at the end of this age, he's coming again. And that's where many people get misled and they misinterpret scripture or mislocation of scripture. And they do not follow, amen, the teachings of the entire word of God. We can't take one scripture and make a doctrine out of it. We've got to, amen, find out it's in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let every word the Bible says be established from two or three witnesses. You don't take and send a man uh, 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 to death by one witness. It's going to have to take two or three witnesses. Okay, and we'll get to that another time. But I want to show you his first coming. And you know his first coming. We're about to enter into the time they celebrate as his first coming. But I want to show you something that I guarantee you that many of you didn't know. And that's, it, it was prophesied in the book of Numbers. And let's go to Numbers 24, 17. And notice what it says. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. 
there shall come a star out of Jacob. Remember Jacob of the 12 tribes of Israel? And a scepter, a scepter is for a king, shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. Okay, that's one scripture. Now let me give you another one. I want to go to the book of Isaiah. Most of us are familiar with this one because we're about to celebrate the period of time. Isaiah, the seventh chapter. The Bible says... And Isaiah, being the eagle-eyed prophet, he could see farther than any other prophet. He said, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign or a token. He says, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That means God in man or God with mankind. Amen. Emmanuel. We sing songs, and, and next month we'll be singing those songs, okay? And I want you to go also to the ninth chapter, and I want to show you something uh, in this one, in the ninth chapter of Isaiah, in the sixth verse, because most of you know these scriptures, but I just want to reiterate them to you. It says, for unto us a child is born. You know when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, he, 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 was, he, he owned the world, but yet he was in a manger. A child is born, but I want you to know this, and I want you to concentrate on this, and I think I want you to meditate on this. It says a child was born, but I want you to notice this. A son is given. A son was given. Keep that in mind. A child was born, but a son was given. And listen to what the Bible says. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name, his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Everlasting Father, and the Prince, he's the Prince of Peace. See, it's, it's five things that he is. That's what grace is. Grace, five. The five foolish and the five wise, five. Okay, let, let's go to the next verse. And the increase of his government and peace shall there be no end. And upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to be established with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hope, God's going to take care of that part of it. That's all we got to do. And of course, I don't even want to go in and to show you the place where he was going to be born. Yes, I will. I'll show you that. Because Let's go to Micah, the fifth chapter. It'll show you exactly where Jesus was going to be born. It was prophesied 600 years before Jesus was even born. Exactly where he was going to be born. It was going to be a virgin. Let me ask you one question. Have you ever known a virgin to have a baby? I rest my case. It says, listen. And Micah, a minor prophet, it says, But thou Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me. That is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old for what? Everlasting. His kingdom, when he established his kingdom, it's going to be forever and ever and ever. It's never going to end. Okay, now, that was talking about his first coming. Now, I want to show you that there is a, a second coming. A second coming. He's coming. He's coming. And everybody is waiting on it. I told you in the year 2000, you couldn't go out and buy water and food because they had stocked out everything. Everybody thought he was coming in the year 2000. And we know that he's coming. Amen. That the wars, the rumors of wars. Read uh, Matthew 24 and, and see all the signs. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the soon coming. 
My brother, my sister, let me just say this to you. For somebody, it's going to be too soon. Somebody is going to be too soon. I pray, God, that you, your family, and all of your members of your family, your friends and neighbors, do not wait. Because for somebody, they say, I've been hearing them talking about the Lord is coming. Yeah, for somebody, my brother, my sister, it's going to be too soon. Just don't let it be for me and my family. Not too soon. Amen. We're going to be prepared for his coming. We're going to be ready for his coming. We are not going to be, amen, foolish virgins. We're going to be wise virgins. Amen. So I want you to go to the book of Hebrews. Well, first of all, I want you to, yeah, go to the book of Hebrews, the ninth chapter. And let's look at us. Time is running out. <clears throat> no, I said Hebrews, the ninth chapter. And the 28th verse. Listen carefully. It says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. One man. By one man's disobedience, we were all made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made. M-A-D-E. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. You can't pray enough. You can't fast enough. You, amen. We're made righteous. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him, hallelujah, shall he appear the second time, not the first time. He didn't already come the first time, but he's coming, amen, a second time. And as I said before, for somebody it's going to be too soon. And he shall appear the second time, and listen carefully to what it says, without sin unto salvation. He's coming, amen, to save us. He's coming, amen, to deliver us from this untoward or crooked generation. From your house to the White House, even in the outhouse, amen, he's coming to, amen, save us. Now, I, I'm not going to have time to go through this, but I do want you to go to Revelation, the 16th chapter. And I want you to see this, uh, 2216. I, listen carefully to what it says. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you, uh, to you these things in the churches. Talking about the church now. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. He says, I, I, I sent an angel. Now I want to show you something about an angel that testified to the church. Let's go to the book of Acts. The first chapter in the book of Acts. Remember what the Bible says, but you, my brother, my sister, my friend, shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. See, that's the power of God. When the power of God and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem in all Judea, and in Samaria. You know, those were hated people. And unto the uttermost parts of the earth. We are sent to people that hate us, that don't like us. Amen. But to the uttermost parts of the world. And I want you to go to the next verse. And when he had spoken these things, while they yet beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Talking about, now notice this, go to the next verse because my time is running. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up. So they watched him go up into heaven. They're, they're watching him go up into heaven. Behold, two men, these were angels, stood by them in white apparel. Throughout the teachings of the Bible, angels always appear. Go ahead to the next verse. Which also said, say, you men of Galilee, why are you standing there gazing up into heaven? He said, this same Jesus, the same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So I want you to know, my brother, my sister, at the end of this dispensation, he's going to come back. 
and I want you to know that we can be prepared for his coming. I want to pray with you tonight because uh, my next video I'm going to talk about the rapture because that's not even a word in the Bible, but we hear it often, but I'm going to explain it to you. So you be watching. And I want you tonight, if you can, to go to Kingdom Purpose TV on fire or Roku and watch. And you can also go to the archive and see any videos that you haven't had a chance to see. God is a mighty God. I want to pray with you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father, for the opportunity to share your word. Strengthen us in the areas of our weakness. These things we do ask in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you and keep you.